Hi, it's Hugh Millen here, and I'm here to discuss the Baden QB1, the philosophies that we've always had at Baden with respect to the football, and then the new features within the QB1. We make the football for the quarterback, and the purpose for that is that we know that coaches will generally defer to the quarterback and say, hey, we, we know his personal preference, and so he's going to oftentimes be very intricately involved in that decision. So what are the attributes that the quarterback want? Well, we want to be able to have as much velocity and distance and also accuracy. And there are some things we can do, particularly with respects to the, the, uh, the velocity and the distance that a quarterback can achieve. The first objective we have is to have the ball as small as legally possible. And we are governed by the NFHS specs, which in the short circumference or the girth is 20 and 3 quarters. The length is 10 and 7 eighths. Those, by the way, are also the same measurements minimum measurements for the NCAA. So we are philosophically devoted to the notion we're going to make the smallest ball possible for the quarterback. From that, from those dimensions, then we have uh, our, our attention on the shape. And our shape, in, in a rough sense, is that it, we like it to have it full from stripe to stripe, but then a more of a taper from the stripe to the nose of the ball. In many ways, it's similar to the NFL shape, but it is a reduced version of that particular shape and what we found is that when you have that shape we measure the angles and we have a scanner that scans to within four thousandth of an inch and we measure all the different shapes of the different balls and with that shape we have an angle of that the index finger these four vectors of the index finger when the quarterback's throwing the, of course the index finger is the last thing coming off the ball when those forces are more generated towards the center of the ball, and I'm exaggerating a little here, but as opposed to out by the end, if the ball is too long, it will be too pointy, and those vectors are out by the edge. By having this shape, the forces are more into the center of the ball. What that equates to is a spiral conducive shape, the most easy shape to throw a spiral. One other aspect that affects the perception of size within the quarterback's hands is what we call the lace footprint. How far the lace stretches from nose to nose. They have to have eight space, uh, eight laces and they have to be equal spaced. We have ours just a little bit longer than the competition and the quarterback will take his grip based on the lace. For example, my personal grip, I have my middle finger on top, my ring finger is in the third channel, many are in the second, but mine's in the third, but the grip is attained as a reference point from the laces. So by having that longer lace, the quarterback's hand is, is more close to the nose of the ball, kind of in a power position, and it certainly feels smaller in his hands. One other factor that influences velocity is the presence of these seams. We like to raise our seams up as opposed to a flat seam. We raise these seams up because the quarterback's index finger, which of course would never be on the lace themselves, the quarterback's index finger can sit right on top of that seam and much like a pitcher in baseball would want to have that raised up seam. By having just a slightly higher seam, he can hook that finger and now spin the ball a little faster. We've put these footballs in wind tunnels and the faster the ball spins, the more it cuts through the air. There's a term called delayed boundary layer separation. What that simply means is the air is adhering to the surface of the ball the faster it spins and you get less aerodynamic drag, which equates to more velocity. There's also a mechanical effect, much like when you ride a bicycle, it's easier to ride at 20 miles an hour because you're coasting as opposed to maybe one mile an hour. When the ball is spinning faster, that conservation of angular momentum is the term. The ball wants to spin around that axis and hold its spiral longer. So we've invested into the science, and the result of that is, again, those seams that the quarterbacks want to have to spin the ball faster. Those are some of the philosophies that we've always had for the bottom football. And new for the QB1 are two real points of emphasis. Number one being the leather. We have a new manufacturer, some really ardent studies and, and work went into making a leather that really has that tack that the quarterback wants, the good grip, and so the hand is secure. And then the other part of that is we have a new lace. You can see this, it might be hard to, to see, but, but we call it the shark back leg, lace and there are these raised fins here, um, we call, but what they serve to do, it's a soft feel, but these raised fins on, again, our shark back lace, they anchor that ring finger, and some quarterbacks will put their middle finger on the lace, most will not. 
Some will put their pinky on the lace. Most will not, but everybody at least puts their ring finger on it. So what we're trying to do is prevent that slide, that perpendicular slide along that lace. And we accomplish that by the, the softer material and also again by those, those shark fins. So in summary, you have the smallest legal ball you can have. You have a shape that is spiral conducive, not a pointy shape, much like the pro shape. You have a lace footprint that puts your quarterback's hand closer to the nose of the ball in a power position. You have raised seams so the quarterback can spin the ball faster and get those tight spirals that are aerodynamic. And then again, we have totally revamped our leather, new leather supplier that uh, the kids are really loving. And then lastly, the lace material itself is softer and it has those ridges that help prevent that ring finger from sliding on the foot.